Another very useful and powerful method we have in modern JavaScript is the map method. With this method, we can map each item in an array to something else. So following from the example in the last lecture, we have an array of positive numbers. Let's say we want to construct some HTML markup using the elements in this array. So we call filtered.map. And once again, we need to pass a callback function here. This function, just like the function that we passed to the filter method, can have three parameters, value, index, and array. So in this case, again, we're going to work only with the value. So we can pass a function or an arrow function. So we get a number, and then we want to map this to some HTML markup. So we can add a string in an opening list item element. Then we add the number. And finally, the closing list item element. So with this markup, we can display each number using a bullet point. Of course, we need to put these inside of a UL element. And I'm going to show you that in a second. So let's see the result of the map method. I'm going to store the result in a constant called items. And now let's display this on the console. So you can see each number is now mapped to a string. That's our list item. So now we have an array of strings. We can use the join method that you learned about earlier to join the elements of this array and create a string. So constant HTML, we set it to items.join, and then display this on the console. Now, instead of an array, we have a string. Note that by default, comma is used as the separator. We don't want to have comma in our HTML markup. We just want to combine these using an empty character like this. Save the changes. Now, comma is gone. The only bit that is remaining is the UL element. So a very simple implementation would be like this. We add UL, then concatenate it with all these items, and finally, another UL. Save the changes. And here's our HTML markup to display all these numbers using bullet points. Now, later in the course, I will show you a more elegant way to implement the same thing. All I want you to take away from this lecture is that we can use the map method to map each element in an array into something else. Now, in this example, we are mapping these numbers to strings, but you can also map them to objects. Let me show you another example. So I'm going to delete this HTML. Let's expand this a little bit more. So instead of mapping a number to a string, let's say we want to map them to an object. So here I'm going to define an object. In this object, we want to have a value property, and we want to set that to this number. And finally, we want to return this object. Let's look at the result. Oops, I made a mistake. I deleted the HTML constant, and that's why we get this error. HTML is not defined. So let's display the items constant. Now here is the result of our map. We mapped each number to an object with a value property. Okay, it's very useful when building real world applications. Now let me show you something tricky here. In our callback function, we are declaring this constant and then returning it. Technically, we don't need to declare this as a separate constant. We can simply put the return keyword here and return this object because we are not working with that constant, with that object constant, okay? So save the changes. We still get the same result. Now, earlier I told you that in your arrow function, if you have a single line of code and you're returning a value, you can exclude the return keyword as well as the curly braces. So let's do that and see what happens. So remove the return keyword and the curly braces, then put everything on one line like this. Now, if we save the changes, we don't get the same result. We get an array of three undefined elements. The reason for this is that by default, these curly braces in an arrow function represent a code block. So when the JavaScript engine tries to parse this arrow function, it thinks here we're defining a code block as opposed to an object to return. 
So if you're returning an object, you need to put that object in parentheses like this. So we put this object in parentheses. And with this, our JavaScript engine will not look at this as a code block. Now save the changes. Now, once again, we get three objects. And one last thing before we finish this lecture. So you have noticed that both the filter and the map method return a new array. They don't modify the original array, okay? Now, these methods are chainable, which means we can call them one after another in a chain. So in this case, this filtered constant is only used here. We haven't used this anywhere else in the code. So we don't have to explicitly store the result of this statement inside a separate constant. We can get rid of this. We call the filter method. Now, we don't want to have a semicolon here because we are not going to terminate this statement. Instead, we're going to immediately call the map method on the result that is returned from this statement, okay? So I'm going to copy our map method here. This is what we call chaining. So we're calling one method. That method returns some result. Now we're immediately calling the map method on that result. Now when chaining multiple methods, by convention, we put each method call on a separate line, and this makes our code cleaner. Have a look. So numbers.filter, and then .map, and so on. And finally, we store the result in the items. That's a better and cleaner code. Save the changes, we still get the same result, right? Now note that here, because the map method is returning a new array, again, we can call the filter or the map method on that array. So here we can call the filter one more time. We get an object and maybe we want to get objects with value greater than one. See what happens? Now in the result, we have only two objects in our array, objects with value two and three. And again, we can call the map method and maybe map each object to a number. So we read the value property and return it. Save the changes. Now we have an array of two numbers. So this is the power of chaining these methods. Hi guys, thank you for watching my JavaScript tutorial. This tutorial is part of my JavaScript course where you will learn all the essential JavaScript features that every web and mobile application developer must know. If you're an absolute beginner or have some experience in JavaScript and are looking for a fun and in-depth course that teaches you the fundamentals of JavaScript, this course is for you. This course is also packed with tons of exercises that help you master what you learned in the course. In fact, many of these exercises are questions that come up in technical programming interviews. So if you're pursuing a job as a front-end or a back-end developer, or if you simply want to have a more in-depth understanding of JavaScript, I highly encourage you to enroll in the course. For a limited time, you can get this course with a discount using the link in the video description. Click the link to find out more about the course and enroll.